The Komodi Islands are one of Cebu's less travelled tourist spots. The islands are blessed with some beautiful beaches. This video complements my previous video I made on the Komotis, so please check that out as well. At the time I travelled, the best way to get to the Komoti Islands from Cebu City was going via Danao City at their pier. Danao City is about one hour north of Cebu City. Here you can catch regular boats to the Komotis. A fast craft from Cebu City was expected mid-2014, but this has been delayed, so hopefully it will happen soon. A fast craft from Danao City is also expected. The boats are currently getting refitted in China and there have been delays in that. Hopefully they'll be running late 2014 or early 2015. The cheapest way to get to Danao City is by catching a bus from the Northern Bus Terminal in Cebu City. It's located close to SM Shopping Mall. Here you can catch many buses. Here you can catch a bus with a signage either Maya, Hagnaya, Bogo. The bus takes about one hour. When you get off the bus, the pier is walking distance from the highway. Here you can buy tickets for the ferry. At the time I travelled in March 2014, it was 180 for a non-aircon and 200 for an aircon. The boat takes about two hours to get to the Komotis. On arrival, if you're pre-booked with some of the resorts, they offer pickup, so just check where the resorts you're staying at, as not all do this. Otherwise, there are plenty of motorbikes or multi-cabs that take you to the resorts. Uh, I rent motorbikes from here. The guy wanted 500 per day, which is far too much. Don't pay more than three to 350 peso per day for a motorbike. You can also rent motorbikes at the resorts. The price of a motorbike to take you from the pier to Santiago Bay, where most of the resorts are located, was 50 peso. And to the other area where there's a few resorts is Mangalod, and that's around 30 peso. The two most popular places to stay in the Camotes are Santiago Bay, here you'll find the most concentration of resorts, and it's pretty obvious why, as the beach here is just amazing. It's flat, it's calm, and even in high tide, it's still quite shallow. On the beach here are a number of simple restaurants. They serve up some decent, cheap food. A lot of the guests come down here from the resorts and eat here, as it's a lot cheaper than eating in the resort. Here are some of the food I ate and the menus and the prices to give you an idea. One of the restaurants even rented out tents. You can rent a tent for 400 or if you bring your own 25 per head. I'll go into more details on the resorts in a future video. The other main area to stay around the Kamaltis is the Mongolong area and there are four resorts located here. Although it doesn't have a public beach like Santiago Bay, only Mongolong Rock and Paradise have their own beaches. Tourist spots worth visiting around the Kamaltis include Lake Danao, a nice peaceful and relaxing place. Here you can kayak, horseback ride, picnic, swim in the swimming pool there. It also has a little restaurant too. I like hiring a motorbike and exploring the Komotis myself. The general conditions of the roads range from poor to average. Just beyond Poro Town is a nice waterfall, if you don't mind a bit of a hike. This particular trip I had to go by memory as the sign to the waterfall was gone. The trail starts off okay but it deteriorates as you get closer to the waterfalls. I didn't know but there are actually more than one waterfall here. I just followed the signs. There's some type of waterfall there. The very small falls, only about two meters high at best. I was here at the end of March, so the water strength wasn't so strong. Rather than go back to the trail, I followed the river, which wasn't the best idea since I had only slippers. I came across another waterfall. Again, a pretty small one. I kept following the river. The actual falls that I was heading to was the Pangananuran Falls. By following the river, I eventually found the trail that crosses the river, 
to these fours. <laughs> the trail was more over really there on my last trip. And there's quite a few mosquitoes around. This time there wasn't as much water flow as you can see from my previous video, which was back in February 2012. There are also a number of caves and camotes. I've shown the other ones in my previous video, so please check uh, those out. The Holy Crystal Cave Garden. And then this is my achievements in life that never to forget that. The Holy Crystal Cave is the one I haven't visited before. The caretaker is a very passionate, religious, and somewhat eccentric. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to Holy Crystal Cave, and then they call it cave because it's dark. So the journey will start here now. This is the human bone that I was discovered as human bone. The identification of human bone of how many years? Amazing and surprising us because this kind of human bone is 5,000 years old. And you know, sir, they, they told me that there's nothing to be worried about this cave. Jeez. This is the amazing here. The amazing locks. Welcome now to meet this is the Mama Mary. The Virgin Mary are always here. This is our presentation here now. I would like to present to you, sir. This is the Holy Cross. This is the grand finale that looks like a movie with happy ending story. Mm -hmm. We can witness now the dancing crystals. How to dance the crystals? Oh. Let's watch this using only the plus light. This is the moment to witness. It is well worth checking out, but it does get a bit claustrophobic in there. Another beautiful beach in the Camotes is Bacal Beach. There's a couple of resorts here, which I'll show in the other video. This particular trip I didn't have the best weather. My last day in the Camotes was really bad weather and the boats from Cebu to the Camotes were cancelled with 24 hours. This was the end of March when generally the weather is pretty good so it's a reminder to allow for delays when travelling in the Philippines. There are some exciting developments for the Camotes in the future. The new Monte Cristo Resort is expected to open early 2015 and an even more luxurious resort is planned for the future. So the next few years for the Camotes looks very promising and it may no longer be the sleepy little island it used to be. So if you're travelling to Cebu for holidays, it's well worth checking out the Camote Islands at least for a few days. Please check out my other videos on the Camotes. For more videos, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.